Welcome to the Tattoo Marketing Podcast. This week we're sitting down with Garrett Radio, owner of Black Coffin Tattoo. Uh, we were lucky enough to catch him in his seminar at the Evergreen Invitational last week. He was teaching how to use Midjourney. If you're not sure what Midjourney is, it is an AI tool that creates photos from text prompts. And he was teaching how he uses it to save himself and his artist a bunch of time while getting some really good creative ideas. Uh, we talk about the pros and cons of it, the the kind of backlash that we're seeing in the tattoo industry over AI imaging, um, and why he's teaching other artists how to do it. And if you want to learn from him, where to go. Enjoy. Hey, really quick before we get into the podcast, if you could do us a giant favor and leave us a review on whatever platform you are listening to this on, it's absolutely huge for us and also helps other artists and shop owners find this podcast. We really appreciate it. Enjoy. Um, I'm Garrett Radio. I've been tattooing for 23 years. Um, I own uh, Black Coffin Tattoo. We're home to 17 tattooers. Um, that's located in Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. And um, yeah, I've been uh, I've been playing around with working smart and uh, not working hard. And that's what's led me to this. Yeah, and um, um, well, kind of like we were talking about, so you just gave a seminar at the Evergreen on Mid Journey, which is a very controversial topic in the tattoo industry right now, but you know, you and I had talked about it the night before and you made, you made a really good case for it. You know, everything's been done. So why not, you know, use these tools to save time, save energy and actually create something that's more unique than anything you're going to pull off Pinterest or offline. Yeah. I, there is a lot of controversy around this. And I, I spoke to a few, uh, a few of my buddies and a few other people, um, acquaintances now were friends um, about the concept of this. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting that people steal art. That's not what it is. Um, what I'm, what I'm doing with this and what I'm using it is, is, is a little different. If you don't know anything about it, um, you automatically jump on the bandwagon and says, Oh, you're stealing art. You're stealing art. Well, somewhere in the Google terms of service, there's something in there that when you put it on the internet, I'm not a lawyer, I couldn't tell you exactly where it's located, but I'll guarantee it's in there. Once you put an image or information on the internet, it's accessible. You know, um, the old timers, we always used to say, you know, back when, when Instagram started coming around, because um, believe it or not, I was tattooing well before that. Um, the only information we would get was from magazines. Okay. So by the time that magazine is published, that tattoo is already three to four months old. Okay. That's how we got our tattoo designs. That's how we progressed. Okay. Then flash forward to the information age. Now, all of a sudden we have computers. I was, when I had, uh, my apprenticeship, I had to convince my boss to get a computer and internet. We couldn't answer the phone and be on the internet at the same time and researching. I got sick and tired of running to the library and checking out the same damn reference books. Okay. So the old timers say, you know what, if you don't want it stolen, don't put it out there. Okay. Everybody forgot that. They put everything out on Instagram. They put it everywhere. Okay. You put your stuff out there. It's already out there. Okay. So we're all guilty of that. And that's fine. What I'm proposing is not that you take art that was designed by um, somebody else and making prints and selling prints and, and designing movie posters. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm using this for and what I'm proposing people use this for is for reference, okay? The, everybody Googles the same damn skull. Can we swear in this podcast? Yes. Okay, good. Everybody <laughs> uses the same damn skull. Um, 
you know, how many different skulls are there, you know, on Google, you got to go pretty deep. Yeah, you can get some pretty unique references. Another option, you can buy your own skull for 1400 bucks, buy a $1,200 camera system and a $600 photo booth, and you can take pictures of the skull and you have that reference. But guess what? After you tattoo 12 skulls and it's got the same missing tooth and it's got the same crack in its eye, you're using the same reference, okay? It's not fresh, okay? What this does is it creates something that doesn't exist. I think we figured out it was something like 4 billion, like some odd number of references. You're going to come up with something different. It's going to help, A, it's going to help your design. You're going to come up with something fresh. The second thing that it's going to do is mid-journey as its default um, aesthetic. It likes to put weird stuff in there, right? You can control all that. But what it does is it gives you something that you haven't even thought of, okay? Um, it, it, it's it's going to give you a different angle, a different view. It's almost like it's a baby. You know how they say with babies out of the mouths of babes, you know, like the, the kids say the damnedest things, and they're right. At this stage with AI, it's kind of like that. It doesn't know that when you say a skull that – it's still learning. So it might throw something weird in there that you hadn't thought of. You can't, you don't know what you don't know. And with, with, uh, there's a book out there from, um, Austin Cleon. I, I suggest everybody in, in the creative profession, everybody read it. It's called steal like an artist. And, um, to, to segue into what we were talking about the other night, you know, everything's been done. You're not coming up with anything fresh. You're, it, it's been done. Every line that has been drawn and every paint stroke that's been taken and, and every saturation has been this, that, and the other thing with the tattoo industry, it's all been done. And to plagiarize is one thing. To borrow bits and pieces um, and then twist it into your own style is something completely different. The big thing with Mid Journey, I'm sorry, I keep going, man. I, 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 I'm very opinionated on this. No, no, that's um, awesome. With with Mid Journey, okay, I've been doing this uh, 23 years. I'm 48 right now. Um, once Corona happened, I started realizing that I was putting my time in the wrong places. Um, and I like to have Heineken. I like to play Baldur's Gate. You know, I like to go fishing. I like to spend times with my family and, and, and whatever. I, I don't always want to be creating for a commercial reason. Now with using this, for example, when I paint, when I draw, it's for me. Okay. I can draw, I can paint. I do airbrushing. I do oils. I, I do, I do these things, but now I'm doing them for me. I'm not draining that battery, that creative battery. And anybody that, 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 a busy tattooer creating custom art they're going to understand exactly what i'm saying you only have so much of that battery and you're burned out okay what i'm using this for is to recoup that time there this ai generator yeah i can draw i can paint but this shit can do it better than me and it can do it a lot faster and i can use that for reference and I put my own twist on it. So it's a time saver. We're running out of time. You and me both and everyone listening to this, you're running out of time. This is the only asset you have that you're not going to get back. There's two things in the world they don't make more of. That's land and time. My time is my, my, um, uh, it's my coin of the realm. You know what I mean? That's, that's all I have. It's, 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 that's what I'm selling. And as tattooers, that's what we're selling is our time. You know, whether it was the, the 10 years of knowledge to learn how to draw that skull, you know, we're, we're selling a little bit of that at a time. It's a little piece of us that, that we no longer have. Yeah. And I think, I think if more people or uh, tattoo artists, shop owners kind of understood, this isn't meant to replace them. This isn't meant to do anything like that. It's just meant to a, give you reference to save you time. It's just to make your life easier easier there wouldn't be such of a pushback on it i know there's these fears that people are going to start making ai images and saying hey this is my work but people have always done that people are yeah. shady people are going to do shady shit 
Um, so it doesn't matter if it's an AI generated image or if they're just taking somebody else's picture of a tattoo and saying that it's theirs, it, it's going to happen no matter what, but, um, the, those the, people know they're going very far. The thing is, is, is the message, the, 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 um, the process, the, uh, I'm trying to think of how I worded it. The message is, is neutral. Okay. The, the program is neutral. AA art is neutral. It's what you do with it that's going to change its intent. If you're going to use it for good, cool. You're going to use it to, you know, uh, save hours and all that, but you're going to use it for evil. I mean, that's on you, you know, uh, uh, if you want to push these images and sell them as art, I mean, that's fine. I know I have a good friend who produces um, AI art and then she spends another 10 hours in, in procreate editing it and twisting it to what she wants. Um, and again, it's reference. I'm not, taking this stuff and pushing it off as my own. What's really interesting about this, um, so I'm gonna kind of cut back. I didn't mean to cut you off, I apologize. Oh. I just get really excited about this stuff. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't long ago. Um, in fact, it's still going on right now where, you know, the the average uh, tattooer wakes up at six o'clock, walks dog, grabs a cup of coffee, maybe breakfast for the kids, sends them off to school. Um, and then sits and draws for three hours, you know, for their appointments come up, they get into the shop, set up, they're good to go. They tattoo all day. They tattoo till eight o'clock, maybe have time to go grab a beer, maybe not go home nine o'clock, feed the kids, whatever, and draw until midnight, wake up, rinse, repeat. That's time you don't get back. And this for, for my process, um, and it works for me. It's not for everybody, but one of the, the cool things about this process for me, um, when I have an appointment with somebody, I do half day appointments and, um, it works with what I'm doing. It doesn't, I, I get, it doesn't work with everybody. Um, but the client comes in at one o'clock. I don't have anything drawn. I don't have anything done. And what it does is it, and, and so that's at one o'clock. 99.9% .9 of the time we are tattooing by two o'clock. That is from zero image. That is from absolutely nothing other than, you know, I, I see the, um, the image in the consult, you know, I mean, and, and I take it from there and I've already got my brain rolling, but within an hour, the client and I, we sit down and we lay this out together and the client thinks it's awesome. They they're like, Oh, I get to, I get to help. You know, we did this and we did that. And and right now people are super impressed by the AI art and the, the brain and all that stuff. Um, and we're tattooing by two o'clock, you know, I can make some tweaks, you know, thank God for procreate and where we're at now. Um, we wouldn't be where we're at today if it weren't for technology. Okay. If, if you're still making your own needles, scrubbing your own tubes and, and building your own machines. Okay. You can, you know, you better be using coils though. Um, you know, if you're still um, doing tattoos with um, speed stick for a stencil um, and you got solder on your knee, you know, uh, you're inhaling flux as you're making needles. Um, I will agree that maybe this isn't for you, but if you're using a rotary, if you have Instagram, if you use AOL for your email or whatever, um, you have more than a landline and you actually have a website, technology has helped you, okay? Technolo new technology is always scary. It's always scary. Um, and technology changes. This is here to help us. Is it going to um, put graphic designers out of a job? I, you know, I don't know. I, that's not what I'm concerned with. It possibly could. It, it could possibly have terrible effects, but it's a tool that gives me my time back. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and it, this mixed with you know a handful of other things that have come out in the recent years. That's that's it. It's buying back your time. That's the entire purpose. To use it. Like if you look at our. Um, Instagram, what a post that we have pinned from probably a year ago is about using mid journey to save you time. Um, and even, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it in the last year. Like if you looked a year ago, you tried to have it make somebody with hands, the hands were super weird. Yeah. It's, it was, it was very odd, but look how far it's come in 
literally just a year and, and we're at a point right now this is the worst it's ever going to be like it's never going to go back it's never going to get worse Backwards. it's only no. going to get better no. um and it's only going to get easier to use because right now i mean the seminar that you put on on how to use mid journey and the prompts and stuff again i thought i was i thought i was fairly good at using mid journey and you're at a whole different level and it just <laughs> i mean i was i was massively impressed i've been playing with mid journey since um because you can just do so many cool things with it <clears throat> but it's going to become easier and easier to use you're going to need less and less things to prompt and i mean even just version 5.2 to version 6 there's a huge difference yeah. there so, it is and and to be fair um uh i like both of them they both have unique um contributions they both have a unique um uh aesthetics um they both come up with something different it is not very user friendly at the beginning and you know if you recall in the, in the seminar you know the first 20 minutes at least was people trying to get people to figure out how to sign up and download you know i thought everybody mm -hmm. like already had that you know but um it, it's cool um you, once you get the program you know if you sit in and you know do your research like i can narrow it down um to exactly what i want um and if it's not what i want it's oh i didn't think of that that's even better you know um again i i don't know what i don't know and if i keep drawing the same skull with flowers all the time skull in a rose skull in a rose uh you know it's going to be the same there there's a statement they say there it's two it's a two-part statement um they say if you do it wrong long enough it becomes your style i don't know how many times i heard that last weekend but the other one that I, I refer to is um, style is nothing more than self plagiarism. Mm -hmm. This does not make you a good tattooer. Um, this you still need to use techniques. You still need to to know how to saturate. You still need to uh, understand layout and all of that. Um, you, you know you're still going to need Procreate to put shit together or Photoshop if you know if if you're on that wagon. Um, or, you know, you take it, print it out, and you use it, and, and now you sketch something different. You still need other techniques. This is not this is not a, a, a leveling the playing field in any way. You still got to know your shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make you a better artist. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, if anything, if you're a terrible artist and you use this, um, you're just going to piss people off because it looks nothing like what you showed them. So yeah, you definitely got to be, be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and even in like in some of the seminars, um, from this weekend, um, you know, they, they mentioned, uh, you know, a, a good foundation tattooed weekly is better than a good tattoo with a bad foundation, you know, with a bad design. So, um, I guess if you have to decide on one or the other, I mean, your design is, you know, that is your foundation, you know, you can always go back in and tweak it, but you know, you got something that's looking pretty fucked up. It's always going to look pretty fucked up. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Can't fix that. Um, it, and again, even one is saving time to getting on the same page as the client. Cause how many times has somebody drawn something up and then showed it to the client because they just kind of gave them a bag what they want. And they see it and they're like, no, that's not at all what I want. So you just got to start from scratch. So, But but they they feel what I notice, you know, I shouldn't say I notice, but what I suspect is, you know, you, you worked on this piece and your client knows that you worked on it, you know, uh, two days ago. And then um, three more hours this morning and you were up late and you got mad at the dog because it didn't go right and and you're frustrated and you present this image to them they're like yeah that's awesome um at least in minnesota we're pretty passive aggressive um <laughs> so people be like yeah that that's cool but maybe that's not what they want but because you spent so much time on it they don't want to waste your time and send you back for a redraw and all of this stuff this avoids that honestly um you know i've got an artist here at the studio she refuses to to um even use procreate you know which bless her like it's her process i am not mad at it um but 
that's time. You know, she literally will draw a tattoo. And like I said, good for her. It's probably the way it's supposed to be. But she will draw the same tattoo. She will turn down walk-ins and appointments because she's got she's got a design, you know, for a tattoo that's three weeks out the road. I praise people like that. Good for you. I'm just suggesting that maybe there's an easier way for you. That's all. Maybe not. But if there is, this might be it. Yeah, and I mean, I'm 100% with you. If people are happy with their process, awesome. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as somebody's happy, no. who cares? Yep. But if you're not happy and you want more time to either do, like, hang out with the family, do things you enjoy, or, you know, take those walk-ins or talk to those people who want a consultation that are coming to the shop instead of having to spend hours doing it, this this is this is a no-brainer to at least give it a shot. Yeah, yeah, it it it, it might not suit you, but um, you know, everybody that I sat down with this weekend, you know, like you had said, you know, I'm pretty familiar with Mid Journey. Um, there's so much more to it. It's more than just typing in a word. And for the record, when I say Mid Journey, uh, I'm telling anybody that's listening to this do not buy any apps uh tattoo generators ai art generators off of off of um the the marketplace in your app stores while they might work that is what's giving ai art a bad name okay Agreed. because they what they're using is not yeah they they're not the same if you get into something like mid journey and there's um dolly out there there's stable mm -hmm. diffusion there's quite a few other ones I don't know those. I'm just figuring, you know, I'm, I'm working on this one right now. Um, if you play around with it, you, you, you can't, you can't just try something. And the first 10 words, the first 10 prompts, like, ah, it's not what I'm looking for. It's because you don't know what you're saying. You don't know how to write the prompts. If you learn it properly, you can control all of that. Um, there are so many features in this, uh, like you said, you know, and, and multiple other people, Man, I thought I knew Mitchell. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could just change the eye color. I didn't know you could do this. They just came out with a new feature the day I was doing the damn seminar. Now you've got character reference. Now you can reference the same character and keep that character going throughout the whole thing. You can make a goddamn comic book with this thing now. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> and and then you know, all yeah. these apps work together with chat GPT and um, you know, somebody's like, Well, how do you get that face? Cool, use face swap. You know, it's a little app. You know, I'm just not getting the face I want. Cool, use face swap. Like there all of these things work together. Um, if if you can figure out the way to do it, you know, there's not one be all end all to this. Um, Procreate's great, but sometimes Photoshop is what you need, you know but they all work together just like this. Yeah. And we're again, with how quickly things are evolving and we're starting to get, you know, AI that can talk to each other. Like one of the coolest things that you had brought up is you can put a picture into mid journey and then essentially have it recreate that in different styles. That blew my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so um, that's, you know, if you're against AI generated art, cause it's stealing stuff. Cool. Try this, take a piece of art that you painted 15 years ago, upload it into mid journey, have it describe it. Okay. And then it'll, it'll give you like four different descriptions and you hit it. And all of a sudden you, that, that painting of a waterfall or whatever the hell you did now it's in your style. And, but it's doing things that you didn't think of. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's 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 and it's kind of a lesson because you're like oh i didn't think of that uh it's almost like getting a critique from somebody like where, where they're showing you hands on well this is what i would do differently this is what i would do differently um I, it's a really cool feature it's super cool and the first thing i thought of when you said that is like when somebody comes in and gives you like a picture off pinterest or something like that like you can just upload it to mid journey, have it make different styles of it. So it's not an exact copy and it's your own flair to it, adding yep. you know different prompts and references and boom. I mean, that's, that's awesome. It, it's and, and like, you know, a lot of people don't know that I just started playing like there's, I'm finding out new stuff all the time. Um, it, it's, it, I, I relate it back to, I remember a guy, I was doing some wolves, wolf tattoos on and he's like oh i'd like to see the drawing i'm like 
no, you don't understand. I, you know, I'm going to print it out. I'm going to print it out for reference. He's like, well, you don't draw it? I said, no, there's people out there that draw wolves for a living. You know, like I, I don't have three years of my life to master going out in the wild and photographing and learning every aspect of the wolf. I'm going to take an image just like anybody else in here. Okay. If you're assuming you're doing realism or anything else. Um, and like, I, like Frankenstein, everybody listening to this is probably tattooed a Frankenstein. You've used a reference. You didn't come up with it out of your head. Most likely. I mean, that's a pretty hard one to avoid. Uh, um, you know, Mary Shelley had nothing to do with the movie. You know, they, they took that. Um, yeah. Mary Shelley. Um, you know, they took a concept of Frankenstein with a big forehead and, you know, somewhere Hallmark or whoever made him green, you know, and, and, but you've tattooed it and you referenced that and that, that that's okay though, isn't it? Like, that's okay. But, you know, heaven forbid, I, I throw a skull uh, into mid journey and, and I use a reference that nobody's ever seen and, and that's wrong. Like, I, I, I don't understand. We're both borrowing. We're both using a reference. That's that's all we're talking about. And that was uh, when I came up to you in your booth and we were chatting before you did your seminar. That was one of the best points that I've heard when it comes to mid journey is everything's been done. Everything's been done. Um, nobody at this point is coming up for the most part with something like truly, truly original, unless it's like, you know, some modern painting that's like two sticks and a circle and some random anyway um but there, so, there, yeah, to, to, yeah there are people out there and not to discredit you know mash cow or anybody else like that like it, there are people that are coming up with new things but they're implementing old things with the new things so yeah sorry to cut you off oh yeah no i was just it was the best point i've heard for anybody that doesn't want to um you know, give it a try. It's like, it's all, it's all been done. This is just to take you to a next level. It's, like you said, it's a tool. It's a tool for a reference, a really yep. cool tool. It's fun. It's a deep rabbit hole, ain't it? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, the whole time during your seminar, like I was doing for the most part, the same picture and then just doing everything with it. And by the end of it, like I had this entirely like different looking image it was the still same core but it was a to it was yeah it was cool um yeah it's it's, 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 cool. it's not something you just plug in and just say hey give me this and you're like oh that's cool there's editing and, and refining that you can do with it um it, it's you know to people that don't know how to operate it yeah it's a crapshoot like you don't know how to control it it's like unleashing the beast and say, i don't know what's going to happen but we'll figure it out but once you learn mid-journey you can control that beast 100 hmm. percent. and where where ai is going um like like no matter what it's going to be there and it's going to get better and actually one of the things i'm going to share my screen real quick um so anybody not watching on youtube will not be able to see this but have you heard of sora i have not so this is chat GPT's new, it's in very early beta testing, but it is text to video. Oh, so these are yes, all created. I, I've heard. How nuts, how nuts yeah. is this? So just a couple of text prompts that looks so good. Th this is where we're going. Um, this is the future and you 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 can fight it all you want um this year it's it's a matter of time before somebody sitting at home can write a song um you know and get and express their feelings um it, it's a matter of time before um some some kid um creates an epic movie you know um that learns this stuff does that take away from from the movie producers and the money out of hollywood it, i mean you can't argue it. Yeah, 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 it can. Um, Ryan Roy, um, I was talking with him outside um, before the seminars, and he made one of the most 
profound statements. I don't know if profound is the right word, um, but it rings very true. He said, all the pessimists, the pessimists, they're all right. Absolutely right. The optimists, they're rich. I like that saying. Yeah, yeah. That, that's Ryan Roy. That's not me. <laughs> I got I, I to <laughs> give him credit. Um, it, it, you know, you can you can hold on or, you know, hold, hold on to the sales and keep going or, you know, you, you can embrace this and um, see where it takes you. It's not going away. Just like you said, those create movies like that with text. That's crazy. It's, it's nuts. awesome. That's absolutely nuts. We, so we use AI inside of uh, our business too. When we're doing marketing for a tattoo shop, there's a new software that's come out. It's called Closebot. Um, essentially when somebody fills out a form on the website or something like that, this will reach out to set the consultation and it uses chat GPT for turbo. It sounds exactly like a person. As so okay. And not just a person, like, I mean, front desk people at tattoo shops can sometimes have a bad day. We'll say that. No, I've um, never seen that. I've never seen that. Be a little gloomy. Um, but this reaches out and it's so friendly and it builds rapport and it asks them about their ideas. And then it will look at a calendar that it's connected to and actually set it and then show reminders. And we've seen shops that were setting around 30% of the people coming in to going over 80%. Not just because how friendly it is, but it it never walks away from the front desk. It never, you know, is not checking the the its phone or its emails. Like this bot, every single time, will reach out within two minutes. And if you're, you know, I'm a huge fan of speed to lead. That's huge, especially someone coming off Google. Like, yeah, if you don't pick up the phone, they're just going to move to the next shop. That's how yep, it works. Yep. Yeah, um, that's what the yellow pages were based off of. You know, the first yep. three. That's why you see AA, AAA, A plus tattoos all in the same place. Mm. You you got the first shot. You got one shot, and if you don't hit it, you miss it. Yep, a hundred percent. And that's that's the cool thing. This one hits it every time. Now, um, is this in studio or is this is this something in the booking process? Could... It's something in the booking process. Okay. So... Okay. Yeah, when somebody fills out, so we do a lot of Google ads, social media ads for shops. And when somebody fills out a form, we always build out a landing page. Um, this bot will reach out. Like we ask a handful of questions, but then this bot will reach out and actually book them for a consultation in the shop. Oh. Um, but doing stuff like that, doing stuff like using mid journey, like embracing AI, one, it will put you ahead of the curve, especially in the tattoo industry. Um, it makes life so much easier. I mean, you use mid journey to save you a ton of time. You use these new AI, like I'll show you some of the conversations after it is sounds exactly like a human. Like it will talk, it will reference what they said, like the flow of the tattoo and the style and stuff throughout the entire conversation. Um, but it is a extremely effective front desk person that never takes a break. And it's going to get way more people in your door. Yeah. Use it. <laughs> you know to, to be to be fair you know i was a bartender um for many years i was a poker dealer uh for many years and um there was uh there was a bartending machine you know it's it's actually nothing new but um where a customer would you know type in their liquor and their their beverage and all of a sudden there's there's no bartender right um they don't have to tip it's it's a it, there's no overpour it's straight it's simple okay you type in what you want just like the jetsons you know mm -hmm. um for anybody that's old enough to know what that is um <laughs> you push a button in it and it's served um with poker they they talked about getting rid of dealers because obviously employees you know the human error is expensive right um but playing digital poker i you know getting uh a I don't even know, $30,000 table, um, you're never going to have to pay wages on it. You know, um, you have to maintain it and there's no dealer, there's no human error and everything is precise. And these, these concepts, they never took off. They didn't work because you want human interaction in a lot of aspects. So I think somewhere 
there's going to be a fine line balance. I think where you're utilizing it, I think is great, you know, and in my brain, I'm like, oh, let me just get a robot, you know, in my in my lobby to replace, replace my counter staff. <laughs> I mean, I got a Roomba, you know, now if I can just have a robot, but but people feel weird talking to a robot you know, in real life, they'll do it on the phone. But um, so I, I, I don't want to get rid of the human condition and in, in, in the humanity by any means. Um, but like you said, um, you know, from, from first contact, how many people listening to this have got, you know, emails sitting in their, in, in, in their inbox that's been waiting, maybe not right now because of the economy, but I guarantee in 2022, when we were at the height of it, um, the, the craziest thing the tattoo world has seen as far as busyness, um, I had months like I, I could not keep up with emails. Mm. So utilizing something like that, absolutely. If you got a big shop with a bunch of um with a bunch of artists or or you know, artists were not very responsible sometimes with emails. <laughs> That's perfect, man. That's perfect. At least it lands it, it it puts the lure in the water and sets the hook, you know? At least now they're not gonna go somewhere else because you interacted with them. Yep. And um again, also great for like people who aren't big enough yet to have a front desk person or something, but I a hundred percent agree. Like it is great. And it sounds like a human and stuff and it's awesome at getting people inside your shop, but a front desk robot kills the human part. I mean, that that's huge. I a hundred percent agree is like, you still want that human interaction. That's, that's what, I mean, that's what we live off of. Like, I don't want to go, you know, I know there's some worry that in the future, there's going to be machines that do tattoos, I don't want to sit there for eight hours with a robot. Like I want to, like I've been going to the same artist for probably 70% of my stuff for the last 10 years. Cause we sit there and we bullshit and it's fun. Yeah, and there's that human component of it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely none of this is meant to, I mean, from mid journey to using any kind of AI doesn't, it can't replace the human interaction a hundred percent, just a tool to help, um, manage time, save time, and, and help your shop. How do people get Midjourney? Um, so as I said earlier, stay away from the apps. Stay away from, do not type Midjourney in your app store, okay? This is a website. The funny thing about Midjourney is it's ran by 11 people. 11. Really? Their whole staff is 11 fucking people. Yes. That's nuts. Huh. Yeah, one of the the head guy is uh, uh, he was a researcher for NASA. Eleven people, it's crazy. Um, so when you get Mid Journey, like I said, it, stay away from these. I, I was looking at some last night, like Tattoo AI in the app stores, and they're horrendous. Um, but you know, hey, dip your toes in the water, but but don't judge. Don't judge the steak of mid journey by the burger at McDonald's. Okay. Um, that's pretty good, huh? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I come up with that shit once in a while. Um, but anyways, so you go to midjourney.com. Okay. The easiest way to use this is to download a free app called discord. Okay. It's, it's, it's a communications app. I use it for my shop. This is how we communicate, you know, via texts and all this stuff. Um, we can add and add people to the to the chat rooms and take them out. Um, so it's it's the first step is downloading a free app called Discord. Once you have that, literally go to midjourney.com. Don't go anywhere else. Don't Google Midjourney. Go to midjourney.com. And on the bottom right, it'll say sign in. I know you don't have an account. Hit sign in, and then it says um register uh mid journey right now the low end is um ten dollars a month if you pay monthly it's eight dollars a month if you pay annually um the next step up is 30 hours that's what i personally use um because you know doing the seminars and all that um the average user probably get by for the first month or two on the eight to, or on the ten dollar one um you might want more and and what it's what mid journey sells you is what's called fast hours okay um it's it's just how like it's kind of like their their coin or their token okay uh you can buy more hours you don't 
you don't really need them. You know, uh, if you blow through your hours, you can still use it. You know, it's just going to be slower. And and the cool thing about the slow stuff, again, with the steaks and hamburgers, man, you can you can get a McDonald's, you can get a quick burger, or you know, you can go to uh, Ruby Tuesdays or whatever and get a nice slow cooked one. Sometimes when Mid Journey operates slower, it has time to let the thought ferment, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So if you run out of hours, it's not a bad thing. You know, it's just going to take a little bit longer. Uh, even at the longest setting on Mid Journey, I mean, it's still a, it's still a lot faster than drawing it. So um, <laughs> go to midjourney.com, sign up, and then um, it links to your Discord. Um, what I recommend uh, doing is once you do that, there's, it's going to put you in this room um, and you'll notice this on to the left corner. It's going to put you in the mid journey AI room and you're going to go in there and you're going to see what some of these other people are creating. And, and, and um, you can use these for ideas for your stuff. Cause you get to see what they wrote. You get to see the whole thing. Um, so you can borrow, you know, they're borrowing it. Guess what? You can borrow theirs too. It's, it's, it's all fair game. Um and then you want to find a place to um, to create. And and on those busy prompts, it's it's kind of tough to find your stuff. Um, it, it, it's a little tricky, but I have a solution for that. Let's hear it. Well, I'm teaching a course on Mid Journey. Um, I uh, taught the seminar out at Evergreen. The feedback was. Mm -hmm. um, was more than I ever expected. It was amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I came out of nowhere with this, and uh, I I was getting hunted down. Uh, come Sunday, I had no less than a dozen people that um, wanted me to do one-on-ones with them um, because the people were talking. I, I heard it from other people um, that, like, it started, it started a lot of conversations. Um, a lot of people wanted to learn it. And of course, you know, when you're at a tattoo convention, I, I want you to make money, you know, like that's why we're there. We're not, we're not, we don't pay all that money to go to convention and learn. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we do, but you know, the, the, the seminar I taught, I had to cram it in two hours. I like, I had to fly through it. Um, so what I really, um, am pushing forward um, I want to do one-on-ones with, with individual people or, or studios. Um, I got to sit down. Um, I had Steve Butcher ask me um, before the seminars, Steve Butcher um, was inquiring about this. So I sat down with him um, on Thursday night, I think it was before the show. And um, it, it, yeah, his reactions were, were priceless. Um I, I sat down with a, a few other of my um, artist inspirations and they thought they knew it too, but they're like, this is deep, um, a lot deeper than they thought. So what I'm offering, uh, what I'm planning to offer is, is an education on this is, is to sit down with someone one-on-one -on -one, um, either like we're doing here or um, at uh, the next seminar that I'll be posting this at will be at uh, Huntsville in Alabama, Hunts Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, my buddy Rock is is um, standing behind me on this and, and pushing it um, and supporting me on it. Um, but I also want to be able to do meetings like this. Um, I can sit down with your whole shop, you know, get everybody together and we'll sit down. Anybody that's got an iPad or a cell phone um, and teach you how to use it properly. Um, there's a lot of tricks. There's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of headaches, but, um, I, I know shortcuts that I can create a, a server for you. Um, you know, uh, and, and keep it all in there for you. So you can find your images easier. That's one of the most frustrating parts about, you know, using uh mid journey through discord is not knowing where to find your stuff. You know, you created this really cool piece, but you don't know where it is because 800 other people just created after you. Um, there's a solution for that. Yeah. And so I took the seminar at the evergreen. Um, and originally you're like two, it was two hours. I was like, man, that's a long seminar. 
by the end of it, like I didn't realize it had been two hours. I was so into what we were doing and it was so cool. Um, and like, like I said, I've been using mid journey at least a year, probably a year and a half. And like what you taught one, it was simple to follow. That, that was like the biggest thing. Cause you can definitely go down a crazy rabbit hole with mid journey and make it extremely complicated if you want, but it was extremely easy to follow. And I learned so much. Like I've been messing with it now for when was that Saturday, for like yeah. four days or almost a week now. And I like keep coming up with cooler and cooler stuff. Um, <laughs> but it definitely is one of those things where it's easy to use, um, but hard to master. I mean, yeah. like you can, you can jump in there and you can write a prompt. Like, like, I mean, you can write literally anything. It's going to look like shit, um, yeah. but you can do it. So yeah, I mean, I'll be the first to say like, that was, that was an amazing course. And anyone that wants to try this should, should get a, get a hold of you a hundred percent. Um, so what we're going with, um, last night we figured out is, um, ink journey pro.com. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working on the Instagrams and Facebooks, but yeah, ink journey pro okay. is what we're going to go with. Um, so also on top of these, uh, on top of the seminars that I want to do one-on-one, -on -one, I'm talking with my buddy rock. Um, who owns Platinum Koi down in Huntsville, Alabama, who's also putting on um, the Hunts Vegas show. Um, he's got a program called 300 Inc. And um, if nothing else, we're also going to be putting this information um, and classroom style up on that. And that's 300inc.com. So um, that's we, we've got some stuff we're working out and um, we're hoping to get that up there soon as well. Perfect. Cool. And if people want to get a hold of you, uh, what are your handles? Um, on Instagram, it's at Garrett Radio, G A W R E W T R A U T I O, um, is the main one that I have. I've I found out I have too many Instagram accounts, so <laughs> that's the main <laughs> one. Um, or Garrett Radio at Gmail dot com, or um, I got to remember what I call it, Ink Journey Pro at Gmail dot com as well. Perfect. Perfect. Well, yeah, like I said, man, I really appreciate uh, having you, you coming on here. This was an awesome conversation. Like, and again, I, we use AI for a ton of stuff. So meeting somebody that's like schooling me and how to use AI is, is very rare. And it's been freaking awesome. Like, <laughs> you know, especially the tattoo artists who would have known. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who would have figured, right? Yeah. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse.